Hello there everyone, welcome to the 19th door of our Advent calendar, we're getting very close now to Christmas Eve and the big day and I hope you're enjoying our story, it's um, yeah, set to get even more interesting as we get ever closer to Bethlehem and 0000, whether you call it AD or CE the Anno Domini or the common era after the birth of Christ. We're approaching it very fast and we're going to meet some new characters today and learn some more about history and the church and Christianity. So let's get right into it and continue on our journey towards Bethlehem with Jostein Gardner, The Christmas Mystery, the 19th of December. And hello there, Forest Stick Official. I'm glad that you got this live stream. I'll uh, read any comments at the end, so stick around to the end. He thought it was such fun to throw gifts through people's windows. On the 19th of December, there was a picture of a Christmas niece in the Magic Advent calendar. He had long white hair and a white beard and was wearing a red cloak and a pointed red hat. On his chest hung a large silver cross, set with a red stone. Mama read what was on the little piece of paper in the advent calendar. Mel Melchior, or Melchior, will go for Melchior. A procession was spreading through Asia Minor one day towards the end of the 4th century. They travelled across the high plains of Phrygia and passed some salt lakes where the birds can stand on the water. On their long journey they encountered bears, wolves and jackals, but when a wolf or a bear came running towards them, they always managed to step aside by one or two weeks and avoid it. They climbed up through a pass in the high mountain range of Pamphylia, which stretches from east to west along the Mediterranean coast. A couple of thousand metres above sea level they caught sight of a figure dressed in green. It was a tall man sitting like a living landmark at the watershed where the road began tilting downwards towards the Mediterranean Sea. As soon as they noticed the figure in green, Caspar and Balthazar began waving their arms and tried to run past the sheep. "'Who's that?' asked Elizabeth. "'He must certainly be one of us,' said the angel, a furrier. The stranger rose and threw his arms round Caspar and Balthazar. The circle is complete, he announced solemnly. Elizabeth didn't understand this, but then the stranger came over and greeted her politely as well. Welcome to Pamphylia, he said. My name is Melchior, third wise man and king of Egriscula. Then Elizabeth understood what he meant by the circle being complete for now all three kings of Orient were gathered together. You have so many strange names, she said. Your wise men, kings of Orient and Caspar, Balthazar and Melchior. Melchior smiled from ear to ear. We have still more names. In Greek we are called Galagat, Magalat and Saccharin. Other people call us Magi. But it doesn't matter what they call us. We are part of this story on behalf of all people on earth who do not come from the Holy Land. Elizabeth looked up at the angel of Firiel, and the angel nodded. That's quite true. Of course, one would not tell lies, surely, continued Melchior. One would not have been a king of Orient unless one spoke the truth, surely. One would not have been particularly wise either, only seeming wise. He was so funny when he talked that Elizabeth couldn't help laughing. He had more to say. Besides, I wouldn't have been called Melchior if I hadn't been fond of milk, nor would I have been called Saccharin unless I was fond of sugar. In short, I am so happy that I often want to sing and dance, and I am always very happy every Christmas Eve, for that's when Jesus was born. That'll do, said Joshua, striking a stone with his shepherd's crook, to Bethlehem. To Bethlehem. But Melchior spoke again. We must greet the Christmas niece first. I don't know how you pronounce that word. Uh, Nisse, niece, first. He lives just below here. With which they set off down the steep mountainside towards the Mediterranean Sea. 
While they ran, Elizabeth said, Is it really true that we're going to greet the Christmas niece? <laughs> Nisse? <laughs> Ethereal pointed down at a town clinging to the side of the mountain. They could glimpse the Mediterranean in the background. The time is 322. The town is called Myra, and this is where Paul came when he was travelling to Rome to tell the capital of the Roman Empire about Jesus. He founded a Christian community in Myra too. I don't understand what that has to do with the Christmas Nisse, niece. <laughs> but the angel went on. Two hundred years after Paul came to Myra, a boy was born here who was called Nicholas. His parents were Christians and later on Nicholas was elected bishop of Myra. In Myra there lived a girl who was very poor because her father had lost everything he owned. She wanted to get married, but it was quite impossible because she had no money for her dowry. Bishop Nicholas wanted to help the poor girl, but he knew her family were too proud to accept a gift of money. Perhaps he could have put some money in her father's bank account, suggested Elizabeth. Yes, although this was a long time before such things as banks existed, but Nicholas did something similar. He crept out during the night and threw a bag of gold coins through their open window. In that way, the girl got the money to marry after all. That was kind of him, but he didn't stop there. He thought it was such fun to throw gifts through people's windows that he went on doing it. When he died, many legends were told about him. Later, he became Saint Nicholas. That turned into Santa Claus, and in Norwegian, it is Christmas Nis. The word Nis comes from Nicholas, and so do the names Niels and Klaus. Did he have red clothes and a long white beard and a red hat? Wait and see, said the angel Ephiriel. The sun had not yet risen. They stopped in front of a low church building in Myra. Myra. <laughs> As soon as they stopped, the church door opened. Out strode a magnificent man with a long red cloak, a long white beard and a red hat. Round his neck he wore a large silver cross with a red stone in it. He almost looked like a Christmas niece, but Ephiriel whispered in Elizabeth's ear that the time was 325 years after the birth of Jesus and that the man was dressed in quite normal bishop's clothes. Only later was the red robe of the bishop exchanged for black clothes in some places. It is Bishop Nicholas of Myra, whispered the angel. Elizabeth had an idea. Has it anything to do with myrrh? You do well to say so, for myrrh was one of the three Christmas gifts to the Christ, to the Christ child, said the angel with a smile. It's become the custom to give gifts at Christmas because of the gifts the three wise men brought to the Christ child and because of Bishop Nicholas's generosity. In his arms, the man held three different caskets. He walked firmly towards the three kings of Orient, bowed low, and offered each of them a casket. Caspar's casket was full of shining gold coins. In Balthazar's casket was incense, and in Melchior's casket, myrrh. We are on our way to Bethlehem, said Caspar. Bishop Nicholas laughed so that his beard shook. Ho, ho, so you must take a few gifts for the child in the manger. You simply must do that, mustn't you? Ho, ho. Since Elizabeth was standing in front of a real Christmas niece, eh, she ran right up to him and felt his red cloak. Then he belt down and lifted her up on his arm. She tried to pull his beard to find out whether it was real. And it was. Why are you so kind? she asked. Ho, ho, laughed the man in red again. The more we give away, the richer we become. And the more we keep for ourselves, the poorer we become. That's the mystery of generosity. Neither more nor less. But it's the mystery of poverty too. The angel Imperial clapped his hands. Well spoken, Bishop. Bishop Nicholas continued. All those who lay up for themselves treasures upon earth will be poor one day, but those who have given away all they possess will never be poor. Besides, they, had had, they have had great fun. Ho, ho, for the greatest joy on earth is generosity. That may be so, said Elizabeth, but first you must own something to give away. At that, the good-natured bishop laughed so violently that his whole body shook. Elizabeth almost felt seasick as she sat on his arm. 
Not at all, he said when he had swallowed enough of his laughter that there was room in his mouth for speaking as well. You needn't own anything at all to feel generosity fizzing in your veins. A little smile is enough, or something you've made yourself. And with those words he put Elizabeth down again on the mosaic floor in front of the church. Joshua thumped his shepherd's crook on the ground, to Bethlehem, to Bethlehem. As they moved off, they could hear the bishop's laughter behind them in the church square. Ho, 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 ho. Mama looked up from the paper and began laughing as well. It was infectious, and when Joachim burst out laughing, Papa couldn't resist it either. So they sat there chuckling, all three of them. At last, Mama said, I think laughter is like the wild flowers. Both are a part of the glory of heaven that has strayed down to earth. But that kind of thing is easily scattered. Before Mama had finished reading what was written on the scrap of paper, Papa brought out the historical atlas. The names are on the map, he said, and Paul really did visit a town called Myra when he was on his way from Jerusalem to Rome. Perhaps Elizabeth in the photo travelled the same way as Paul, suggested Joachim, because she went to Rome too. And she had a silver cross with a red stone in it, said Mama. The Christmas Nisei did as well. Papa laughed. Then he went into the sitting room to fetch an encyclopedia. He came back reading as he came down the passage. Quite correct about the Bishop of Mira, he was the very first Santa Claus. I must say history is full of strange connections, said Mama. It's as if a small Nissa have been jumping up and down all through the centuries. <clears throat> and that is the end of chapter 19 and um, quite synchronous there that the theme of chapter 19 is generosity and we just read a Christmas carol yesterday evening didn't we so uh, yeah I think a large theme within a Christmas carol is is generosity and and the opposite right uh, greed and miserliness and um, hello there, Green Grapes, and Ben Dassett. Hi, my friend, I hope you're doing well. Uh, ben says, a like for a like is an eye for an eye, as in the Bible, and the eye shall be taken, and it is. Merry Christmas to you, Ben, and your family. I hope you're all doing very well. And so that was um, chapter 19. I won't read tomorrow, but on the 21st, I think I'll read three chapters. Why not? To, um, to catch up on the 20th to read the um, read the 21st and then the 22nd. And hello there, Blossoming Beings. Very nice handle there, Blossoming Beings. I like that very much. And I'm glad you um, have managed to come to a live. Welcome. But that's all for this evening. Like I say, there'll be no readings tomorrow. And on the 21st, I will do two, maybe three, so we can get uh, ahead in the story and then we'll be approaching the end and the birth of Jesus and I'm very much interested in seeing how the story ends. But for now, guys, look after yourselves. I'll see you on Wednesday. I hope you can make it. Look after yourselves. Merry Christmas. Take care. And I'll see you soon. Bye, guys.